Hey everyone, Curse Deck Builder here, making our way to 10,000 decks assisted, and here we are with Roxanne Starfall Savant. This is one of our donation decks of the week, and it comes from Kybor, who has quite a bit to say, so I'm going to summarize their notes a little bit. They're very interested in this commander, which I think is correct. This is a very fun commander. And they say, they want my opinion on card draw and single target removal. That's easy. We'll have that in additions. Uh, and trying to figure out how to use Roxanne and get as many meteorites out. Uh, finally, evasion and not dying to blockers, which we'll have some things to say about. And then not sure what the win condition of the deck would be. These are all general questions and we'll try to cover all of them. Uh, thank you so much Kaibu for sending this deck. Uh, Roxanne has really caught my eye the second she was spoiled, so I'm really excited to be already working on her. With that in mind, we got a lot of questions to answer. Let's get right into it. If you'd like to take a look at the deck list we're talking about today, or if you'd like to submit your own deck list to me so that I can make a video assisting your deck, please check the video description down below. So who is Roxanne Starfall Savant? And why is she our, I don't even know what to call this. It's kind of like an artifact. I'm gonna just call it a meteorite deck. Roxanne, Roxanne Starfall Savant is a cat druid, five mana in red green, four three. She has two abilities. Their first ability is that when she enters the battlefield or attacks, you'll create a tapped colorless artifact to a token called meteorite. And meteorites, when they ETB, they deal two damage to any target and they can be tapped for any mana of any color. There is a token here, but I think the entire card is a reference to Meteor or Meteorite. Literally the card Meteorite. I thought it was called Meteor, which has the exact same text, but costs five men. I think very straightforwardly, you can look at this commander as saying on ETV or attack, create a five mana card. That's something that's worth noting to just kind of like grok the power level of this commander is that's just very straightforwardly very very strong so let me just go back a little um though i do like the new uh, meteorite token it's a little more exciting so on etb or attack she'll create that token and she has a second ability that says whenever you tap an artifact token for mana add one mana of any type that artifact token produced this is the less interesting aspect of her. In fact, it's a part that I think most people keep forgetting because that first half is so good and notably works very specifically with how she is, but it's worth noting that she is, in essence, a ramp commander. Let's look at the deck as is. The deck as is, I think, is pretty straightforwardly good. We are down a card. We are 99 cards in the main, so we do have room to put an additional card. We have 36 lands. I wouldn't mind being 37. Our commander is five mana, and I think I wouldn't mind some more ramp. We have the collection of Farseek Nature's Lore, Three Visits, and Cultivate that I think is very good. Um, having rampant growth or an extra land in would be just nice. Remember, we're trying to hit five, so cards like Cultivate do get a little better. I do notice there's also Kodama's Reach. I didn't miss that. It gives us a nice little variety of ramp to get to what we want. And then looking at our curve, we have a really nice curve for what is objectively a ramp deck. Usually ramp decks tend to go a little further and plateau a little more, but I like this as a low plateau of targets with really good effects. Of course, at nine mana, we have Blasphemous Act. Uh, we have Polyraptors, which we'll get into, and a few other dinosaur-centric cards near the end, which I think is rather cute. And uh, a few other, we'll, we'll get to uh, a damage tripler and we'll get to the copy effects. So the deck as a whole, I think is pretty straightforward. I will say there is a bit of a low on the one mana aspect because like Tyvar Stand and Goldvein Hydra are not actually one mana uh, creatures or one mana spells, though Tyvar often is. I think otherwise, I think the deck is really nice. So what we need to do here is we need to this might be one of those times I'm going to go into additions a little early before we go into subtractions, but we need to talk about Roxanne and what makes her abilities good and viable. So there's a few aspects or directions to go into to get more triggers. Uh, the easiest one to, to think about is the 
like token doublers. We can see over here we've got parallel lives, for example, that when a token comes into play, we get another token. Now, this is very, very good with meteorites, to the point that I, I'm known for not really liking token doublers or doubling effects, but here I particularly like them because they just create more damage and more like immediate onboard effects. I find with a lot of doublers, you have to kind of, you're either over exerting yourself into making a board that, you know, is very threatening but easy to deal with, or you're like working into a very specific combo. But here, what we have is a two card combo of any token doubler and our commander is all we need. So I do particularly like that. And then we get immediate, you know, uh, payoff for it. When the meteorites come in, not only do we get to like, you know, the goal is to hit two, two power, uh, two toughness creatures and, you know, trade one card for two, but also we can double up those meteorites to take something out with four or less toughness, which is even better because we're getting a little more, usually we're getting out commanders, taking out commanders or things like that. I don't know if even better is the right word there, but still both really, really good ways of taking advantage of these doublers and our commanders. So I like that. The other option is cards like Aggravated Assault, which I also really like, where we get fundamentally more and more uh, combat phases and every time a Roxanne attacks, we get an additional, you know, an additional meteorite. Now, this is also really good, especially since Aggravated Assault is a mana, you know, like mana ability and we are generating mana. So this is really nice as well. The one I'm not as sure of is the copy ability. Now, now Kyber was asking about the options of, um, you know, Flicker in red and green, and there's not a lot, and you're already playing, I think, the best ones with Conqueror's Closet, honestly. But I do understand the next best thing is to make copies of Roxanne. But one of the pro there's two problems to it. The first problem is straightforwardly, she's a legendary creature, so the other copy doesn't get to attack. So you kind of get half of the triggers you regularly would with red copying. Now I have a solution to that in my uh, additions, but it is kind of a real problem that makes us feel like we're only getting half the effects out of our cards. But that's kind of tied hand in hand with the other problem. And the other problem is how expensive these abilities are. Things like Mirage, Fan, Fan Lax, things like, um, where are the other ones? Well, Blade of Selves to play and equip, uh, Helm of the Host to play and equip, uh, Jaxus to play, discard a card, make a copy only for your card to immediately die, uh, Delina to be a kind of, you know, format a card that you then have to attack with and then you have to get lucky with to get meaningful triggers, right? You want to get at least more than one token at a time. All of these adding together, Play March Rider is another one. All of these kind of add together to being a really interesting mechanic that we can play with our creature, with our commander. However, and to be fair, it does work with cards like Dockside, but as a whole, these cards are very expensive mana wise. And though we can generate mana, I would rather cut down, at least on like Delina and maybe the, maybe the Mirage fan life, at least that's instant. Maybe, maybe something like the Helm of the Host. I'm, I'm not sure. I just feel like we're kind of overdoing it. We've got too many of them. And though they like jive really, really well with the high end portions of our deck, both in power and in mana cost, they're kind of just okay when they are not being used with our commander. And I think that's notable because especially when we're behind like these cards are a little win more right if we slam if we slam jaxus or if we slam delina on an empty board they're really not going to be doing much and even if you know or we can we can drop something else to start using them the next turn our opponents do really have the means to interact very easily with that so i feel like this is very much so just okay um, and I would like to cut down a little bit. The rest of it, I think, is rather good. I, I, most of the deck is very strong. The sword, I really like the white-green sword here for the blink, but the red-green uh, red sword, I'm just kind of okay with. The thing is, we're, we're, what I feel like is that this deck has a bit of a balancing act problem. 
And that has to do a lot with Roxanne and how she works. The thing with Roxanne is that, you know, when you are ahead and she is working as attended, she's very, very good. And when you are behind, she doesn't work as well. So with that in mind, let's go into additions really quickly so I can see, I can say what kind of solutions that I have and what the ideas I have with Roxanne. I really like her, but it's, it's a juggling act to make her work, I think. So first of all, answering some of the questions, when it comes to removal, the one card I think is notably missing is Pick Your Poison. You could also be playing like Chain Lightning or something as an other board clear, but Pick Your Poison feels like the most notably missing card, very, very strong. When it comes to card draw, I believe you're already playing big score, but these are the cards that are very good in red card draw. Technically, it's, you know, you are discarding, so you're not going up on too many cards. You're already playing Harmonize, and these create treasure tokens. I think they're very good, with the only other option I think is worth noting is Garrick's Uprising, which I am very sure you are not playing, unless I'm, yes. I think Elemental Bond, yes, is the weaker version of this card. I would play uh, Garrick's Uprising. Notably, your commander has four power and is just a little better, and gaining Trample is also kind of nice for your bigger creatures. So, I'm a big fan of this card. You could also play both this and Elemental Bond at very little cost, and I think that's fine. They're kind of set up payoff cards, whereas the, um, the Thief, I don't know what to call these are all like stealing cards except for unexpected windfall right um, all these treasure cards are almost are all immediate gratification whereas this is kind of a setup and payoff so it's nice to have both but let's get into the things I want to talk about and before we get into well these haste enablers I want to take a moment to talk about Roxanne and something that I note about her so Roxanne is five mana when she enters the, enters the battlefield or attacks, she creates a mana rock. So what I think is interesting about this, and notably uh, Kybor was asking about evasion for Roxanne, I almost don't particularly care. If we are in a situation where we have enough mana to play Roxanne, and we have a haste enabler, we can play her, you know, equip the boots or have her have haste attack, and out of that, we will get two additional mana rocks. Then, if she dies in combat, we have next turn created the mana we need to pay her commander tax. And I think that's really, really interesting. Obviously, it gets better when she stays on the board because those mana rocks are worth more. But if she dies through combat, it's almost fine, right? Now, don't get me wrong, this is kind of like a Cultivate style effect where we get two mana into play. I guess not Cultivate, the uh, four mana versions, but let's just say this, is, this gets two mana into play and subsequently costs more and more each time. Five the first time, seven, nine. So even if we are always generating the mana to, to do this, we are slowly kind of costing ourselves out of it every time she dies. But I think that's balanced by the fact that the meteorites will destroy creatures or deal damage to planeswalkers or what have you on ETB, which I think is enough to kind of just even it out or at least make it, you know, somewhat uh, beneficiary to be constantly in this loop. Especially because this loop doesn't account for the fact that you're playing lands or mana dorks or anything else you have, so you'll still have other plays if your opponents, if you keep attacking with Roxanne and she keeps dying. So, the ones I always suggest for haste enablers in these colors are Concordant Crossroads and Mass Hysteria. Everyone knows the spiel, but I will say it again. I wonder if I should scroll down. I don't know where my, my face is. I do this. Okay, it doesn't cover it. Okay. The, the spiel is this. Concordant Crossroads and Mass Hysteria both create a situation where your opponent's creatures all have haste and therefore they are incentivized to attack with those creatures. As those creatures attack, your opponents will have less blockers, and therefore increasing the chances of Roxanne attacking and getting through. Now, it doesn't particularly matter because, and, and I think to myself, if you really wanted, you could meteorite Roxanne herself, but if she lives, you're pretty happy. But if she dies, once again, you come back, you recast her next turn, and you are continuing to ramp. So these cards, I think, are really, really good in this deck. And especially when you're dropping your big bombs, both of these, you'll be really happy to have either of these on the field. Especially with, like, Atali, right? In fact, we could probably play both versions of Atali. Oops. 
Speaking of haste, another card that I think is one I really want to play with, I am playing with this in modern at the moment, is Lava Spur Boots. This is really, really cool. Now, notably, it's, it's good because you can pull it off of Urza Saga, but I think generally this mana cost is really, really attractive to me, even in Commander, where Lightning Greaves' main benefit is the fact it's so cheap to play and equip. And for that first play and equip, Lava Spur Boots cost the same. Two to play uh, and equip total. That being said, after the boots fall off, we lose that kind of benefit and now we're using one to equip. So technically Greaves is a little better than the boots. That being said, I think it's close. Ward one is not the same as Shroud, but to make it a little easier to split up and easier to like play on turn one, equip on turn two for certain creatures is still rather impressive if you ask me. It's just another pair of boots that I really like and I think you'll be particularly happy in order to, in equipping it to Roxanne. Speaking of another equipment, and this is the Evasion Conversation. Uh, evasion Conversation, that's funny. Beamtown Beatstick is an equipment I always like. I really like that it gives menace, I really like that it also creates treasure tokens. And I think this is a really good deck to be just kind of playing this and having this around. I think menace is really interesting with this deck because you attack with your commander, and then if you can use that meteorite to kill the second blocker, it makes your uh, Roxanne uh, unblockable. And I really do like that. Late game with your bigger creatures, it gets even better because it forces two blocks to trade with your very, very large creatures. And the plus one is fine. Late game, I don't think the treasure tokens is important, but notably the treasure tokens do work with Roxanne, obviously, with her second ability, and otherwise kind of work with the idea of how the deck goes. Another card that I think is interesting when it comes to doublers is one that I'm a very big fan of, and that's Mechanized Warfare. This is an ability that I think is somewhat underused, and it is, how do I put this? It is aggressively costed. You'll notice that we have like other effects like City on Fire or Fiery, I think it's Fiery Emancipation or the like, which are doublers or triplers, but they cost quite a bit of mana. Mechanized Warfare with the Meteorite specifically says to do 50% more damage. Now, that's not the same as doubling, obviously, so it is a little weaker. It's three instead of four, but three is much better than two. It turns every Meteorite into a, into a Lightning Bolt. And it is specific because it is red or artifact source, which allows this to work. So I do really, really like this. I think there's probably a few other things you can do with this if you want to lean into this kind of effect. I think of the, um, what is it? The partner commander that says, uh, like creates rocks on landfall and those rocks can be thrown for one damage. This will also, actually, I don't know if the rocks do the damage or the creature holding them, but regardless, both ways, as long as they're red, will be doing one additional damage. Um, things like a few cards coming up will also do additional damage where this one damage is basically doubling it. This one additional damage is basically doubling it anyway. So this is really interesting. I really like it. Um, is it kind of win more? I think so, but at that mana cost, I'm not too concerned about it. Here's the cards I was talking about that uh, the previous card works well. Reckless Fireweaver and uh, Ingenious Artillerist. So both of these will deal one damage per artifact that enters the battlefield, which can be du doubled for the previous thing. And this is just really, really nice. Reckless Fireweaver and uh, Ingenious Artillerist are each opponent. So basically each Meteorite will do three damage across your opponents and then an additional two to whatever you like, which is really nice. They're low to the ground. They work really well with treasures. I think they're really good value creatures at low mana in this deck that you're pretty happy to drop out and your opponents kind of have to preemptively think about, which is something I really like. I like when you play a card like this, like this and Blood Artist Effects, where you play this early and your opponents just get kind of suspicious and they might actually use single target removal on this card, which I think is very much so rather a win. Uh, it sucks to lose these cards, but at the same time, that is removal that is not being used on your big creatures, and I do really like that. So I think these are very easy additions. I don't, this was supposed to be with the equipment. I was a little confused why I didn't slide that over, but now this is another equipment card that I think is interesting in this deck. It notably works really well when your commander is out of the game or if you've been just going the treasure angle. 
is just a big creature that can later, uh, when the germ dies, you can equip it to your mana dorks or the previous two creatures, which are known for being small and not being able to attack well, and all of a sudden they become really, really big. Notably, of course, if you can equip it to something with Trample, or you have Garrick's Uprising out giving Trample, this gets better. And at a certain point, you can even just equip it to your commander and start smacking face that way, which I also really like. I think this is a decent card. Um, I don't think you're playing Urza Saga. I'm very... Let's see. a lot of cards to go back through. Yeah. Oh, you are playing Urza Saga. Okay. Perfect. I'm glad to hear it. I, I, I have a hard time suggesting Urza Saga because it's an expensive card, but obviously the constructs there were very similar to Nettle Cyst, so you'll know the power of these cards is dramatic because they get very, very big, and they're kind of annoying to deal with as the tokens are just tokens, and the Nettle Cyst, unless they destroy the Nettle Cyst itself, destroying the germ doesn't really make that much of a difference. Some, a card I really, really like in this deck is Svela, or Svela, yeah, Svela, Ice Shaper. So this creature is very, very notable as being kind of a backup commander within the deck. Now, it's not the same thing, they don't work the same, but Svela notably creates mana rocks, just like, just like your commander does, and comes with their own payoff for all the mana you've generated. So I do particularly like this, and I do think this is a really nice backup commander, and if you can get both out, especially with haste, you could be getting very, very far ahead in both mana, or using this payoff to start getting uh, your big bombs out and getting even further ahead. So I really like this. I, I really like when commanders are super niche, when they have a backup commander in the deck, and I this makes me have a lot more faith in Roxanne that we have access to this. Something that I saved kind of late into this is Mirror Box. The legend rule doesn't apply to permanence you control. So this is my kind of answer to the problem with the copy abilities, right? We copy Roxanne and we lose all the copies. Well, Mirror Box says, that's okay, you don't. This is really great because not only does it mean, yeah, we get to keep the copies, but we also get the attacks in because that's how red copying tends to work. It's like a splinter twin effect or a kiki-jiki effect where you create a copy, that copy get, gains haste, can attack, but it dissolves at the end of combat or the turn. And mirror box allows us to make the most of this by getting that attack trigger in. And for Roxanne, who is a Titan in that way, that she has an ETB and a, a trigger, an attack trigger, we get even more out of her. We get basically double the triggers when we have mirror box out. Now, with that being said, do I love mirror box? Um, I don't think so. I, I want to note this card because like, if you want to go heavy into the copying aspect of this deck, you can use this with tutors. I would really recommend like Gamble and the like to grab this. There's the, um, the Nahiri card from the epilogue of March of Machines that gambles basically for an artifact. And both of those cards will grab mirror box, just don't discard it, but I think that would make it better. But I don't know to what degree I want to say go in this direction. I just want to have it open because it is really cool. And once you've made enough copies of Roxanne, the game is basically over because of the sheer amount of meteor showers, I guess, you're putting on your opponent. So if that's really your goal, which to be honest is a very, very fun goal, the mirror box angle is probably the direction you want to go into. Uh, another artifact that I think is worth noting, not necessarily for this build, but a different build of the deck, is Unwinding Clock. Unwinding Clock is very, very strong in the sense that if you are playing heavy on instants, Unwinding Clock gets really, really good. If you're playing heavy on artifact synergies, if you're using something like uh, Jirakur Grid, I'm going to misspell that for sure. No, I didn't. Awesome. The Jirapur Aether Grid, where you tap untapped artifacts to deal damage to targets. If you are using this in addition, like if you're using that kind of effect or that kind of plan, which I think is not bad for sure, Unwinding Clock gets a lot better. So not necessarily in this build, but I think it's something worth considering as a different version of the deck. In addition, you can use this with other like flash enablers and get even further into artifacts and artifact synergies. But to me, that's kind of defeating the point of Roxanne, or at least it's making Roxanne into something that I think isn't as fun as what she is now. So, something worth considering. 
And as for finishers, I believe this is the last card. Crackle with Power just screams out at me as a card that I think is a very, very fun finisher for a deck like this because of the sheer amount of mana you can pour into this. Now, I want to be clear that um, it's probably not the most efficient win condition to burn out your opponent, but it is a lot of fun and notably has just been reprinted. However, that being said, this is a pretty big that being said, I do not like this art. <laughs> I do not like the flavor or the art of this card, and on the other hand, Crackle with Power's original art, or its full, uh, you know, full art, is just awesome. I love this flavor text, I love Rowan, and I love this kind of, like, powerful spell vibe, and I don't like the breaking news. This is just me. Sometimes our budgets are around <laughs> aesthetics, and I do understand that. But Crackle with Power feels like the easiest solution to the question of what do I finish the deck with. Otherwise, you could just continue to play more bombs like Itali. You could play Vorinclex. Uh, I would probably play the eight mana Vorinclex. You could play the original Urubrask for the haste enable. Um, those would be options I think would be just as good, but Crackle with Power is the fun one. And I want to end with just a, a bit of a thought on Roxanne and something that catches my eye. I think Roxanne is really, really cool, a little niche, and I wonder if there are other color, like another three color commander deck that she would do better in. I just don't know what that is. She screams build around me, and I do really like that, but she kind of like exists in this little weird space where I'm not entirely sure what I want to do with her. I think, I think the all-in copy plan with mirror box is the most fun. I just don't know if it's the most successful. I think I will eventually make a little behind me behind me is a little bear <laughs> i might eventually make a big little poster and put start putting up the <laughs> the problematic commanders that i feel like i can't solve and roxanne is close to being on that list it's not as bad as something like jira but i think i think what she wants to do is fundamentally difficult to work with with the color combinations she's in and you end up kind of stretching the deck in several directions that makes it difficult to play her. That being said, I think I would definitely try out the mirrored box version and maybe it's just more consistent than I think it is if you can ensure to tutor for the mirror box, which I think is possible. And then if you can do that, protect the mirror box, uh, get Roxanne copies out, I think the deck will be very, very successful. Thank you so much, Kaibo, for sending the deck. The deck looks really, really cool. Honestly, I didn't tell you to take out so much because I think generally it's just really, really nice. I think some of the high end here... Oh, I never talked about Polyraptor. This will be the last thing. I just wanted to praise the idea. I really like the idea of hitting Polyraptor with meteorites, uh, both in flavor, almost because the meteorite doesn't kill the dinosaurs, <laughs> but uh, notably just being able to create a giant army of po Polyraptors is really cool. That being said, uh, well, actually, I did suggest haste enabler, so it's not that bad, but without haste, I think it's kind of trickier to make the Polyraptor army to be very threatening, but I do think it is very, very interesting as a win condition. All right, thank you so much. Thank you for sending the deck. Good luck and happy deck building. Thank you so much for watching. This video is brought to you by viewers like you and people on my Patreon. If you'd like to send me another draft of this deck, or any deck, there is a link in the video description down below. And if you'd like to make your deck one of my donation decks I work on, there is a link there too. Finally, if you'd like to like, comment, subscribe, I would be very appreciative. It helps the channel quite a bit. Thank you and good luck in brewing and building.